Hi there folks, welcome to the seventh video in this Python Par Game series, making the Othello slash Reversi game. Um, this is the final video in the series, and I think if you've made it this far, I mean this is a Well done for sticking this long. So we, we, we basically already have the game, it's working, the game runs correctly, the computer player is making its moves, the computer is beating us. Yeah. What we want to do now is just put in the final finishing touches, we want to add a score, we want to add a, a, a game over state and a new game state. Really straightforward, it's going to be relatively quick. Right, so all we need to do now is put in those three states for our game. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into our Othello class. In our Othello class, we're going to go ahead and right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Othello class and we're going to add an attribute in our init method. Uh, here underneath the rows and columns, we're just going to call it self.gameOver. We're going to put that to true for now. All right, that's straightforward. Uh, and then we're going to go into our input method. Let's just set the game over state to false for now. Let's just set it to false. And then in our input method, um, we're going to go down to source. Yeah, after we click the left mouse button, uh, we're going to say, oh yes, hang on. Something we, we need to remember. We can play a move, and then while the computer's playing a move, we can click and click click, but not be able to click. So we don't want to do that. So that needs to be changed as well. So in the event dot button, sorry, that was a bug that I forgot about. Over here in line editor, we actually need to insert if self dot current player is equal to one, and then the player value, right? And not self dot game over basically the game over state must not be must be true not false it must be false not true and we're just going to highlight this entire section of the query and indent it just like that yeah so basically when the game plays i can't click for the play computer playing anymore yeah right so that's that done Underneath our update mode, yeah, no, underneath our self dot time. So after our input method of event dot time dot one, right, um, that is actually still in our implementation of the mouse button. So if we're clicking, and say if self dot game over x y is equal to par game dot mouse dot get was right so if the game is set if the game is actually in the game over state we're going to get the x y position of the mouse if we're clicking and then we're going to say well if so these are grid coordinates or something we're going to put in in a moment so i think let's come back to that we'll come back to that um player get the state if self dot time player is equal to minus one new time right over here so we're going to put it in a check over here line 107 on the computer player's turn we're going to do a check to see self dot grid dot find available moves we need to pass it self dot grid dot grid grid logic self dot current player right so we're doing okay if there's nothing in that list we're going to self dot game over will then be set to true okay and we return so the computer cannot make a move right And 
then while still in the computer player section in the update method we're also going to perform another check and say well we need to check to see what if not self dot grid dot find available moves self dot grid dot grid logic self dot current player right self dot game over is equal to true so after the computer player has made its move, it's going to perform a check to make sure that there is still a move available for the, for the, the human player to make. All right. Then we're going to go through. So that's basically just to check, okay, is, the computer player, is there a move available for the human player? Um, the next thing we need to do is... Wonder if there's a check that I'm missing. That is to make these moves. Let me just double check quickly. Okay, no, I had it wrong. The computer is playing its best, but or it's playing as not its best. It's based upon the parameters that I've set. Um, so we've got the self dot game screen, the end screen. So once we once we hit the game over section, we we'll just ask you the input self dot game false. Stupidly to see where we end up uh, as quickly as possible. Um, there should be no moves available for me to move. Currently, the computer is already winning. Um, let's see where we go. Is this, this one? Okay, like that. Like that. The computer is kicking the backside of it, so I'm just selecting randomly, but yeah. Still, computer playing as it would. And the end screen games, bad luck, you lost. Uh, there was no more moves available for me to make, that's why we ended up losing. Alright, so in our end screen games, our end screen method, self dot end screen, we want to add one more thing. We want to add an, an, a, a new game button. So we want to say new game will be equal to pygame.draw.direct. We're just going to create a very quick button. Nothing serious. End screen image. White. Um, coordinates will be 80, 160. So this is the coordinates on the this pygame surface that we've created. New game text will be equal to self dot font dot render uh, play game one black right end screen image dot split new game text one twenty I'm going to go back up to my init method. I'm just going to set the self.game over to false. Let's see how that looks. To true, sorry. I'm going to set it to true. So if I run the game, the game's already in its own other state. Game dot is uh, Okay. Slide 215. We've got a spelling mistake or grammar mistake. That should be a full stop. Okay. Let's run this now. Come on. New game text. Come on. Nothing happens because I can't click there, right? So if we go back up to our input method in our hello class, yeah, so self.game over x, y is equal to pygame.mouse.position. Uh, 
um, we want to say. Um, we're, we're basically putting in the coordinates of where that button is going to be created. So we're going to say, we're not going to use a collision, we just created an image, and we're going to say if the mouse is in, the most, in between that position, the new game should start. So we're going to say, if x is greater than or equal to 320, and x is less than or equal to 480, and y is greater than or equal to 400, and y is less than or equal to Right, so basically, if the mouse is in the position of that, that new game, the play game square, self dot grid dot new game. So that's a method we need to create. We're going to say self dot game over or equal to false. Self dot grid dot new game. So let's go down to our grid class. Let's create a new method called fifth uh, new game. Right, and in our grid class, the new game. Straightforward. We're going to go self.tokens.clear and then self.grid logic so we're clearing all the tokens from the tokens list dictionary and then self.grid logic we're just going to regenerate a new grid right. and then from the rows which is self.y and self.s Run the game now. Play like it lost. Fine. We're going to say play again. New game starts. We get to play. Just one second is taking us to play. I don't like the one second. Up here in our grid, we have self dot update in our fellow class. We're just going to change this to uh, 10 split seconds. So one tenth of a second. So we can put it before. So we'll start a game, and we'll use the reaction a lot faster. Without thinking. So we'll do the thinking. It's not thinking today, so we're searching for the best outcome. So we'll click play. Uh, currently we're winning. That's good. Uh, no, we're not. And let's keep going. So if you change, remember when we built that min-max algorithm, we set the depth level at 5. If you change it, if you make it more, the, the amount of time the computer is going to spend thinking is going to be longer. And if you make it less, the amount of time the computer is going to be thinking is going to be less. Because um, it's playing through every iteration of available inputs. So sometimes it can grow quite exponentially. Um, you know, there might be a large number of moves available. Computer still working with it, playing in such a way that he ends up with a higher score than we do. Perhaps. Okay, so he's got a possible move there, he's got a possible move there, possible move there. Uh, and from that, there's other possible moves that can take place. And that's why it takes so long for him to think. So he is literally playing through every iteration of the searching for the best outcome for himself. Dependent also on me playing the best moves possible that I can play. So obviously if I don't play the best moves, it's a recipe for bad outcome for me. Right. I'm going to end this video here. Load cheating is about to hit us again. So I'm going to call it quits on this video right now. If you enjoyed this series, if you followed along, if you found it helpful in any way, if you find ways to improve it, please let me know down in the comments. Um, if you really enjoyed it, though, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Hell, even if you hit the subscribe button, that'd be really great. Thank you for joining me in the series. I hope it was fun. And enjoy your new Othello game. Cheers for now.